Sticky traps are indispensable to the gardener and the homeowner. They're a great way to create a barrier at the base of a tree to prevent climbing insects like caterpillars from getting up into the canopy and doing damage. They're also a great way to catch deer fly and that sometimes means the difference between doing work outside and not because deer fly are a pain. And with Tanglefoot or this sticky trap material we're gonna make today, you'd put a thin coat on a blue bucket, hold it above your head, with a stick and the flies will gravitate towards it. Now, Tanglefoot is the commercial brand. There's another one called Tangle Trap, and uh, it was invented in the 1800s and used for fly paper, which this can also be used for. So you put a thin coat on a piece of paper and hang it and the flies will gravitate towards it, get stuck and they won't get loose. It requires only two to three ingredients, sometimes four depending on how you want to make your tangle foot or your sticky material. Um, the, the primary ingredient is pine resin. So the same as a uh, rosin bag or for baseball or just pine resin. You can find it on trees. You don't need to buy it. So if you know where pine trees are and they have the sap coming out, uh, that's the stuff to collect. Uh, sometimes you'll find it in big chunks uh, and this under pressure in a long period of time will form amber and it'll actually collect insects in it and obviously it's because it's sticky. Now I buy this, it's pretty cheap, I think uh, probably $20 for a kilo nowadays, maybe less, maybe more. Uh, so you can either collect it or you can buy it. Uh, I got this at a paint shop, uh, they use it for woodworking. Uh, but basically you're just going to need 100 grams of it to start and then you're going to need castor oil Though any oil will work castor oil just works really well because it is sticky itself So it just it, multiple sticky things Will get the bugs better and a little bit of double boiled or boiled linseed oil uh, that seems to be kind of reduce the cost, but uh, if you're to just use castor oil and pine resin, you'd get a pretty sticky material. Uh, the last ingredient if, is optional. Same with the linseed oil, it's optional. But beeswax is optional. Uh, it just helps make the paste thicker. So you'll find with the castor oil and the pine resin, it, it's pretty thin, which is fine because a lot of people use it for fly paper and you just need a really thin coat for that. And so the thinner it is, the better it works in that application. However, if you're doing tree banding where you put the band of Tanglefoot around a tree on a piece of paper or some material, uh, you want it thick enough that when dust blows on it and rain and all sorts of bugs get stuck in it, that it's still soft enough that when new bugs come into it, uh, their feet go through the dust layer or the other bugs and they get stuck to it. So that's the important variations. So obviously with the variations, if you want it thinner, you add more castor oil and or linseed oil. And if you want it thicker, you add more pine resin and wax. Now when you buy pine resin, uh, it comes in all sorts of chunks, big chunks, little chunks, but the, uh, generally you want it as fine as possible. Not, you know, it's gonna get pretty fine and it doesn't take any effort to crush this stuff up. Um, see if I can do it all once here, but you'll find that it's, it breaks apart readily. And once you get it crushed, it just helps it dissolve quicker. So you don't really need to do this step, but if you're, um, heating it up on the stove, it will dissolve a lot quicker. You can skip this step and just put it in, but you're going to take longer on the heating source than if you were to crush this stuff up. Now once you got it pretty fine, you can put it in a pot. I'm using a pan today just because it's easier to demonstrate what's going on here. Uh, word of advice, you're not getting these pots and pans back. Uh, this stuff is so sticky, uh, you'll probably never get all of it off. Like even right now, just the resin on its own is sticky. So if you're doing this, I do recommend kind of using uh, a pot, go to a garage sale or a dollar store. You can even do it in these dollar store stainless steel bowls. Uh, you're not going to need a lot of heat for this, but uh, this is like $2. You can probably get them for a dollar. And then I use uh, 
dollar store wooden spoons again 25 cents each and they will do the job uh, got this pan at an overstock store so it, it will work and then i just use an outdoor burner don't do this inside again once the stuff if you spill it it's going to stick everywhere anybody who's worked with tanglefoot knows that this stuff is quite sticky so once you have this in the pan you can add your oils And then before you add the heat, you just want to stir it around and get everything wet. It's literally like cooking, but this will actually, once you apply heat, it's all going to melt and form kind of a uniform mass. Now I do add a little bit of beeswax. You can just add a few grams. I just use some don't actually need much beeswax, but like a few grams to start. Uh, that just helps to keep things going or thicken things up a bit. And you can keep adding this as you see fit. And again, the oils, 50, 50 mils per oil to start with 100 grams of resin. I'll put a recipe down below once uh, this is all done. So just get your burner going and stir. Don't leave this. None of this is going to be an issue when it comes to flammability. These are just oils. The only thing is, uh, you know, deep frying rules apply, much like deep frying chicken. Don't leave the stove. Don't leave this on the stove and the heat will melt it. Um, so, and it shouldn't take too long, but it will get pretty hot. So just stir everything until it's a uniform mass. So now that everything's melted, uh, it just forms a uniform liquid. It is quite hot, so just be cautious. You're just gonna have to let this cool down. Now's the time to transfer it into a container uh, and let it cool. Because again, I'm using a non-stick pan, which seems to actually clean it up pretty well. But if you're using a stainless steel bowl or a pot, uh, it's just gonna adhere to it. So when it's warm and melted, Transfer it to a tub or something that you want to hold it in. That's going to be the easiest way to contain the stickiness. And it will take a while to cool down. And again, if you find that it's too thin or too thick, simply transfer it back to the pan, heat it up, get everything melted. And if it's too thick, add more oil. And if it's too thin, add more resin or wax. It may take some experimenting, partially because the pine resin is not always consistent. Again, they're just gathering it from trees or cut down trees. Uh, so the consistency of this is what matters. Um, if you don't have castor oil, you can use something like sunflower oil. It's just not going to be as sticky. But again, this pine resin is pretty sticky. And while you're doing this, you're going to find your hands are sticky. Uh, soap will actually get it off. But if you find that the resin's really adhering to your skin, uh, rub your hands with just like a little dab of any oil. Olive oil works. And then just rub it all over your hands. That will loosen things up. Now, because these are all oils and soluble in oil, water's not really going to work that well on it. Uh, but in chemistry, we have a term called like dissolves like. So getting sticky oils off with something that's not so sticky, like sunflower oil or olive oil, is going to dissolve all of this. And then you can wash that off with soap and it will make your hands a soft and buttery and also not sticky. So try that if you find you're having a hard time cleaning this stuff up. So I've given these a chance to cool down overnight and uh, they firmed up. Uh, you should only take an hour or two for them to cool down, uh, depending on how hot you got it. But this is the original. This is actually the commercial one. So that's what uh, Tanglefoot looks like. It's pretty adherent. Uh, again, it is kind of a cool morning here. So this is probably a little firmer than you'd get in the afternoon, uh, which is fine. Uh, again, with these, you want them thick enough that when the sun's beaten down on them on a tree trunk, uh, that they don't basically drip off. So you want something fairly firm. Now this one was 90 grams of resin and 100 mils of oil, and it's fairly thin. It's got a honey-like consistency. So unless you're doing fly paper 
uh, you'd probably want to thicken that up. It's got no wax in it. Now this one is 100 grams of resin, uh, 5 grams of wax, and uh, 100 mils of oil or 50 mils of the, each oil. Now this one has an excellent consistency. Uh, it's probably, here I'll use a, a comparison here. It, it's just like the uh, Tanglefoot. Uh, it's a little bit thicker, um, but once you smear this on, you'll see that anything, it just, it, it like nothing, if a fly were to land on there, uh, it's definitely going to get stuck. It's quite tacky. Now this one was just some B-roll for the camera, but it was just, I just basically eyeballed it. But it, it, this one actually came out probably as good as the other one. Uh, again, probably just, you know, some resin, some oil until it uh, came out. So this stuff is pretty easy to make. Uh, I think it's gonna be pretty hard to mess up. Again, the wax seems to make a significant difference. You know, again, this one's got a honey consistency, but the moment you add the wax, it definitely thickens things up. And again, if you wanted to adjust these, all you have to do is stick them back in the pan, add some wax or whatever you need, and it's good to go. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, post them below. Uh, I'll also have the recipe below, and I'll see you in the next video.